In the beginning, there was Sir Colin Marshall, with Lord King brought in by Margaret Thatcher to transform the fortunes of British Airways in the run-up to privatisation. BA became one of the world's leading airlines, introducing pioneering seats, catering and state-of-the-art aircraft. Then there was Bob Ayling, who didn't really last that long, unpopular with investors and customers alike, and shed some more jobs. Rodderington arrived in 2000 and began a huge cost-cutting exercise, shedding more staff and parking up Concorde. Then in 2005, Willie Walsh arrived, who promptly withdrew from most airports to focus on London's Heathrow and Gatwick, overseeing a disastrous opening of Heathrow Terminal 5 in 2008. He then led the merger of BA with that world-renowned airline, Iberia, to create IAG and outsourced all of BA's IT offshore, and introduced the fun size Twix bar as the second meal service in economy. The British media loved it, but it was symptomatic of an airline CEO who thought that his airline offered too much and that customers were envious when they were fed less than Oliver Twist. Oh, and he also shed a lot of jobs as well. Then Keith Williams arrived, inheriting rock bottom union relations from his predecessor. He promptly resolved them bringing in new contracts for new starters, but retaining benefits for older and more senior crew. He also shed costs, selling off unwanted stakes in other airlines and binning off the troublesome domestic operation BA Connect. And then in 2016, we got the legendary Willie Walsh sidekick, Alex Cruz. From a low-cost budget airline background, he naturally fit the bill for running a premier brand, such as British Airways. With endless IT failures, strikes and other general misdemeanors, it was not a sad day in 2020 when he hung up the high vis and left. But for now, a very warm welcome back to today's video as I gulp down my usual Johnny Walker in the BA First Lounge, prior to my flight to the lovely Doha in Qatar, aboard BA's Boeing 777 with Club Suite. Today, my flight is going from the B Gates, which is usually good news because there just happens to be a very nice lounge here. It's usually much quieter and cooler at the B-Gates Lounge, if you've never tried it. The lounge food is, to be honest, getting a bit dull these days, so I try to spice it up with my own eclectic collection. I won't begin to try and explain what this particular car crash is. It tasted okay, though. As I arrived at the gate, there was a storm in the sky and a storm on the ground, as BA had scheduled two aircraft to leave from one gate at roughly the same time. That took a while to sort out, so we missed our departure slot, and I got my first glance at today's vintage, 22-year-old 777 taking us to Doha. Unfortunately, things didn't get much better as today's jet bridge was broken, a Terminal 5 enhancement that I've noticed a lot just lately. However, I was soon led to my club suite by a very friendly and very welcoming flight attendant, and so far, so good. On board, at least. I was quickly served a welcome glass of bubbles as I set up for the flight ahead. Newer type menus were handed out, with a wider, more comprehensive choice. A choice of three dishes for each course, in fact. With a long-standing relationship between the White Company and British Airways, it was no surprise that I was handed today's amenity kit, which, as you can see, is a very white case, and we'll have a look at that later in the flight. I didn't want to let this video go by without letting you know about a really good little gadget I've been travelling with for about 12 months now. I'm not sponsored to tell you this, but this little gadget is so good that if you travel on any long-haul airliner and have wireless headphones, this is the gadget for you. If you were of my vintage, you might remember corded headphones. They still exist today, but in a Bluetooth-powered world, what do you do if you want to use your own headphones with the airlines in flight entertainment? Well, let me tell you about a nifty little gadget that came my way a few months ago. Made by Airfly, this piece of wizardry plugs directly into the airline's audio output and sends the sound to your own Bluetooth headphones. It's easy to set up, and so far I've used them on flights up to 10 hours long. Here's how I used mine on this flight. You plug the device into the audio output in the storage area, and hey presto, I've got movie sound through my Bose QC Ultra headphones. Austin Powers never sounded so good. 
After takeoff, I was handed the first of my selected cocktails, that Johnny Ginger, which was really good. I have to say, they didn't spare the alcohol, in all credit to them, but at this stage of the flight, I'm sat with my cocktail, watching the movie, listening to great sound, and leading the high life. For dinner, I had the prawn cocktail to start, which was excellent, followed by the stuffed chicken, which would make even Bird and Matthews envious. So good, in fact, that I stripped it to the bone, just like Willie Walsh did with Brand BA. But it's getting better. Gone is the fun size Twix as a second meal service, and today's much improved menu is a credit as BA recovers from those dark years. And then for dessert, I chose the cheese board, which, as with the other two dishes, was excellent. It was just the sort of cheese that I like, with a nice chutney and apricots, all washed down with a delicious glass of port. No complaints at all. I had hoped to bring you sunset somewhere over Turkey, but unfortunately, because of our significant delay out of Heathrow this afternoon, I've got to show you sunset over Bucharest instead. It's still an interesting city, of course. So, whilst we're watching the sunset, there's just time to tell you about my awesome Patreon supporters. It's people like Steve, Joshua, Kieran, James and Joe who help me bring you new videos as often as possible. Thank you, as always, to all of my Patreon supporters. With the BA logo burning bright at the front of the cabin as the lights are turned down, I think now we should have a look at the little kit that's going to make me even more handsome than usual. Maybe. So let's take a look at what products you get in the amenity kit and see if any of them are going to radically improve my life. Let's start with this leaflet which tells you how to use the ingredients of the kit. You're going to get some eye shades, some luxury lip balm. You also get some of this pulse point liquid stuff that you're supposed to put onto your pulse on your wrist and apparently it makes you feel better. I'm not sure how it works. I did try something similar on Qatar Airways who serve a similar kind of product. I'm not sure it made my health that much better, but it smelled nice. So there you go. And before I knew it, two films later, we were ready for our second meal service. And this is where British Airways has really, really improved. The mushroom ciabatta with more alcohol and chocolate dessert was very good indeed. So as we descend into Doha, let me give you my thoughts on today's relatively short long haul flight. I've been flying with British Airways for 25 years. I've seen it at its high point and I've seen it at its lowest point when Willie Walsh was in charge. Where it is right now is in recovery mode. Some say Willie Walsh was a brilliant businessman and that without the horrendous cost cutting he made, BA would have gone bust. I take a different view. Other airlines exist that still provide an acceptable service. The fun size Twix, for example, as a second meal service in economy to New York, was just an example of where British Airways got it very, very wrong. But our new boy, Sean Doyle, is making the right noises. We might get back to BA being a world-class airline, but it'll have to be with a modern twist, like everything else in life, I suppose. It's unlikely Manchester singer Mick Hucknall will get his BA lounge back, or that Newcastle hero Paul Gascoigne will sing about fog on the Tyne in his local lounge. Those BA lounges went, and they're not coming back. But if today's flight is anything to go by, there is hope, and we may once again see BA rise to become that world-class airline once again. So on this very happy note, I will bid you farewell. I'm going to enjoy the Middle East for the next few days, so I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, and mind how you go. Bye for now.